Hey guys, it's Chris. From icy fingers of death to strange lightning storms to whirls of fire, here are eight of the most dangerous natural phenomena in the world. Number eight, Brinicle. If you go to the coldest places in the world and look under the water, you'll find a series of ice formations known as ice fingers, or brinicles. While this may not seem impressive at first glance, they can grow to be well beyond the length of a human, which on average is over five feet tall. The formation of these ice fingers are caused by brine, which is more dense than the water around it. As it moves down into the water, it gets colder and then freezes, becoming a literal ice statue underneath the water. As they grow and evolve, they resemble fingers. You wouldn't notice this above the ice caps that they're formed from, but they're there. And they are interesting, which is why many divers have gone below into the freezing waters to capture brinicles growing on camera. However, I must make it clear that they can be harmful. They've been known to trap fish as they expand and cause them to die because of their icy touch. Number 7. Beacon of Maracaibo when there's a storm, there's often lightning, but in Venezuela, there's lightning that virtually never stops. This is known as the Beacon of Maracaibo. Specifically, this happens every night in western Venezuela, over the Catatumbo River. Starting at around 7 p.m., lightning will start to strike the river, and it won't stop for the next 10 hours. This storm happens between 140 and 260 days out of the year, and can strike around 280 times per hour. What makes this phenomenon so special is that no one is really clear as to why the lightning does this so frequently and so unendingly. There have been many theories, including that there was uranium in the bedrock of the lake, and that it was causing the strikes, but others say that it's a unique weather pattern that's formed because of the mountains in the surrounding area. Neither theory has been definitively proven, though. Do know that weather conditions can affect it, though, because a drought in 2010 caused the event to temporarily stop for a few months. Many have taken pictures of the frequent and powerful lightning that comes over the area, which isn't too hard, as not only are the lightning strikes frequent, but they're also so powerful they can be viewed around 250 miles away. And now for number six, but first, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and click the notification bell so you you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number 6. Submarine Volcanoes There are many types of volcanoes out there in the world right now, but only one truly surfaces from the ocean, and it can cause a lot of problems when they do. These are known as submarine volcanoes. The kinds of submarine volcanoes vary by where they are in the ocean. For example, there are many volcanoes that are in deep areas of the ocean, so thus even if they were to erupt, they wouldn't affect the surface that much. However, there are many types that are near shallow waters that can erupt, and when they do, they can create islands. And that's how places like the Hawaiian Islands and Reunion were made. The good news for those who live near oceans is that eruptions from submarine volcanoes are rare to happen. But when they do erupt, they can cause massive damage, such as when a volcano erupted in 1650 near the island of Santorini, killing 70 people in the process. Much research is going on studying these volcanoes and trying to predict if such eruptions will happen soon. At present, there are believed to be over 1 million submarine volcanoes in the oceans right now. Number 5. Ice Tsunami If you hear about a tsunami, you no doubt picture a massive wall of water that is barreling towards the coastline of a place, with such height and intensity that it could either wipe out a city or at the very least cause a severe amount of damage. These are one of the greatest natural disasters in the world, but there is actually a more dangerous version of them called the Ice Shove, also known as the Ice Tsunami. As the name entails, it involves a tsunami that has ice in the mix, which limits the location of said ice tsunami to certain places in the world, like the Arctic. However, that doesn't mean they can't reach land. They just do it much more rarely, and in places you wouldn't expect at times, like Lake Erie in the United States. The way an ice tsunami works is that ice that isn't fully connected together, so drifting ice, is pushed through the water via the currents and winds, and that enables it to reach the land and be pushed with such intensity that it can be stacked, 
In fact, they can be stacked so high that some records have these mounds of ice reaching 40 feet into the air. That means that any places that are near the coastlines of a lake or the ocean in certain Arctic areas can most definitely be hurt by these ice shelves. Though unlike a regular tsunami, major cities won't have to fear them going too far inland, as the push of the wind and currents can only do so much. Number 4. Milky Sea Phenomena Bioluminescence is a process of the body of certain animals and plants that allows them to glow certain colors. And there are some areas of the world that have plants or algae that illuminate certain areas of water. However, well outside of these areas, sailors from many periods of time have noted that the oceans or seas that they've traveled on have glowed for unknown reasons, and never in the same spot. Or even stranger, it'd glow in the day or the night, which is in direct contrast to various areas that have bioluminescent plants or algae. Adding to the mystery, in 2006, a satellite image of one of these milky areas was captured, and scientists determined that it wasn't plants or algae doing this but actually a massive group of bacteria. But therein lies the question, why would such bacteria come together in such mass and propagate in various parts of the ocean for days at a time? Some scientists think it's because they're trying to attract food or even fish, but that's not been proven. Nor does this answer explain why this phenomenon happens at all, or why it happens in only certain parts of the ocean or seas or various other bodies of water, and not others that seem just as likely to have it happen. Number 3. Global Warming When it comes to the world of today, one of the most dangerous phenomenon that is present is one that humanity itself directly contributes to, and that's global warming. To be clear though, global warming is not solely produced by us humans. That's kind of a misconception. If you look at the history of the world, not just man, you'll see that there have been many times when a massive change in temperature has occurred, including the birth of many ice ages and the warming of the earth to go back to a more temperate state that humanity now enjoys. That being said, there is little doubt that humanity is contributing to global warming in a way that rivals anything the earth can do on its own. And that is how humanity uses gases like carbon dioxide and more in great levels during their daily lives, not the least of which is the use of millions of cars. These gases get trapped in the atmosphere and activate the greenhouse effect of getting trapped and then warming up the atmosphere. The Earth naturally warms up on its own, but that's over the course of many centuries or even millennia. But in the case of humanity, we make rises in temperature every decade, sometimes even less than that. The rising temperatures can cause the ice caps to melt, which makes the waters rise, as well as causing effects on all other biomes in the world. Efforts are being made to try and limit the effects humanity has on global warming, but the progress is really slow. Number 2. Fire Whirl when most people think about tornadoes, they think of them on land in their base form, or on water via water spouts. Both of them can be incredibly dangerous, but there is a third on-land variant that is arguably even more dangerous, and it's known as the fire whirl. Unlike base tornadoes or even water spouts, fire whirls form in a very different way mainly in that their core is comprised of the fire that is on the ground, and not from shifting forces in the air. To that end, a fire whirl goes from the ground up, and not from the clouds down. While tall, fire whirls rarely ever reach the clouds above, though they can still be quite tall. They're formed when the heat of a fire is met with both smoke and shifting winds, causing a vortex of sorts to form which is why many people refer to these as fire tornadoes. The insides of the fire whirl reflect the intense heat of the fires, in that they can burn up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. They burn so hot and so furiously that they cannot be put out by normal means, only burning out when there is nothing left to burn in the area they're moving around in. While rare, fire whirls can be seen during wildfires and other fire events, and can last anywhere from a few minutes to 20 minutes. Number 1. Foamy Storm No, you did not read that wrong. There's a natural phenomenon in the world known as a foamy storm. Because this is literally a storm that sprays balls of foam, and even waves of foam onto the shores of the places nearby. One such occurrence happened on the east coast of Australia back in 2016, where wave upon wave of foam were thrown onto the coastline. To be clear, technically the foam isn't that harmful. 
It's as soft as foam or bubbles from a bath and usually isn't harmful to the touch. Some people even went into the foam tides to get caught in a wave and see what it felt like. As for how the phenomenon came to be, it's a very rare set of circumstances that produce the effect. Mainly, it's a combination of water, salt, algae, and certain other products that can be in the ocean at the time. When mixed in the right way, it makes foam, and a whole lot of it. And then nature takes its course, and has winds and waves move the massive amounts of foam to the nearest beach, creating a very unique visual that's hard to explain if you don't know what's going on. Just a warning though, sometimes this sea foam is made of dangerous waste that's within the ocean, including toxic chemicals. So should one of these storms come near you, it might be wiser to stay away. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these dangerous and unique phenomena that occur in our world? Which of them do you think is the most dangerous or maybe the most unique? Would you like to see one of these events up close? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist, and I'll see you next time.